This is Marketing Jam, a show featuring the brightest minds in marketing. Let's talk about SEO quickly, this whole search engine optimization thing. People are frustrated by it, confused by it, and there are so many SEO tools out there. Free ones, subscription ones, which one's the best? Do you ever feel like it's been this dark art, this mystic craft hidden for only certain people to understand? Well, here at Jelly, it all became clear when we started using Ahrefs. The reports we got, the clarity on site ranking, and so much more. Today, for all our clients, we provide Ahrefs reporting and use the tool to audit sites. It's the premier SEO tool that gives you the confidence you're providing top-notch reports and data to your clients. Let the only confusing thing be how the tool's name is said. Check them out at ahrefs.com. Thanks everyone for joining us for another week of Marketing Jam. I am so excited you are here. Uh, this is an exciting week as we have a guest I uh, am excited about because I'm a fan. Uh, I am not only a fan of the product, but I'm really excited that John is here to share uh, what's happening these days with Audible. And I'm sure you're a user uh, and lover of Audible if you are loving listening to audio. Uh, and so let's jump right in. John, thank you for being here. Thanks, Darren. Awesome. So tell me your origin story. How did you get to the position where you are today as the CMO of Audible? <laughs> it's funny. Everybody takes a circuitous route in life, right? Mm -hmm. I started off as a, a quant person. I was a consultant doing valuation models for uh, different companies, some troubled companies, some were lawsuits of uh, intellectual property, we were calculating damages. But I noticed that the people that were making decisions impacting the company were often in marketing. And I saw that they needed a little bit more quantitative bent. And I said, I could do this. And I went back to business school and got a degree in marketing. And then uh, joined a small wireless company uh, called AirTouch Cellular that actually merged with uh, Vodafone and then Vodafone uh, merged its US business into Verizon Wireless. So uh, I got into wireless and marketing in the early days. That is very and cool. And then I uh, eventually did every marketing role that I could ever want to, and to do and uh, end up uh, coming to Audible to run their marketing program, which I love because I like you, I've been using the product for many, many years, even before I started with the company. What are you listening cool. to right now? I was going to say, I, I was going to ask you that same question, um, <laughs> but I got my, I got mine. I'm going to pull my up right now. I'm actually re, uh, I've read what the dog saw, but now I'm listening to what the dog saw by Malcolm Gladwell. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah. 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 He is prolific. He is so popular on our platform and in podcasts too. So, yeah, he's he's super popular. Okay, what what blew me away the most though was I I've listened to a few you know I listened to books on Audible, but then talking to strangers came out and it was almost like uh, Audible audiobooks are on steroids because it was it was next level in, in the way that he got yeah. in um, news pieces and radio interviews and in person interviews like it was fascinating. So I think do you call that enhanced audiobook or what what do you what do you call what Malcolm did? I'm not sure if there's a name okay. for it. He kind of refers to it as the next generation audio uh, book or the next generation podcast. And I think it's remarkable because you get the benefits of performance and the intimacy of that, of that mm -hmm. actual person's voice, yet the narrative arc of a story. And uh, it's, it's super popular. And uh, he's a big fan of uh, audible, uh, both, um, from a professional standpoint and personal standpoint, uh, he uh, he exercises uh, with uh, audibles, and he's been a good partner of ours for many years. It's uh, it's great. I'm a, I'm a parent. I have four kids, and so um, my my youngest is is just about two, but doesn't talk a lot right now. Thank you, thank you. As you can probably so the bed of it all, you're spending time and bonding with your child, but at the same time, like I, I think I went through the square in the tower. With my, it was got me through kind of that those early years with him was what I, I was reading then at the time. Or, or and what do you say? Do I say I was reading it or do I say I was listening to? How do you do? What's the proper <laughs> word? Dude, any proper lexicon that works for you, you're the customer and you okay. are the boss. Okay. That said, okay. you know people say reading, people say listening. It's just about consuming it. I say listening, but uh, my daughter says reading when she listens. So, yeah. Okay. 
Very cool. And, and yourself, what do you currently got on, going on your Audible at the moment? Yeah, I just finished uh, a new original that we just put out uh, by Tom Morello, uh, the uh, you know uh, social justice classic rock icon, and uh, he combines his own personal story with music, so it's really cool the way he puts it together. And uh, yeah, it, it's it was phenomenal. So uh, I love that. And then right now I'm listening to a a new short that we just came out with called Half Life. Uh, so Really just, I like to do fiction, then nonfiction, fiction, then nonfiction, and kind of bounce back in between both. And so uh, as I've kind of watched the progression, so do you now have books that are only available in Audible that you couldn't get at like a bookstore, for example? We have many. Uh, they're called Audible Originals, uh, and you can't get them. They're made to be heard. They're made to be listened to, and you can't get them in any, um, in any uh, bookstore. So... In some cases, we have exclusives that are also books, but we just released in July uh, our fastest selling Audible original called The Sandman. Basically, we work with DC Comics to uh, perform the iconic franchise, The Sandman, uh, in audio. And uh, that is in our top five fastest selling titles of all time. And it's the only one that isn't a book. So we're really starting to get traction with certain things are made to be heard and produced to be heard. Kind of like when, when the mobile industry first started, you know, you had people having these online, you know, experiences trying to convert that to mobile. But until you purpose built mobile apps, mm -hmm. you really didn't get the full immersive experience. And that's it's beautiful to see that's happening to audio right now. It's incredible to think of, um, you know, even talking to my grandma, you know, I went and visited her this summer, um, they would sit around the radio and that was entertainment, listening yeah. to, uh, you know, a, a radio theater, they would call it. Mm -hmm. and, and I was telling her because we were saying on the drive up to, to 100 Mile House, we listened to The Adventures of Narnia, right? And, and the C.S. Lewis, awesome. and, and, it was, and it was enhanced, so it was like it was actors and sounds and battle noises, yeah. right? And so um, there's no visual, but our kids love it. And, and yes. we're into it, and, 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 but yet we're missing the whole visual piece, but yet their imaginations were then exercised and, and you know, they got to kind of go where they want, imagine Lucy how they wanted to. Yeah, that's awesome, isn't it? And, you know, Aslan takes many different shapes depending on who you are in your mind, right? And, uh, and that, uh, that goes to the point where we did a, we worked with the university, uh, city, London University, uh, to, uh, sponsor a study, and it showed that the your mind is more stimulated when you listen versus watch, uh, because when you watch, it's pre-canned for you, uh, but you're, when your mind's at work, it, it's, a, it's a magical experience, and when you have the right content and when it's performed the right way, it's, uh, it's such an immersive experience. I feel like um, when the, Malcolm came up with his new book, Talking to Strangers, I was telling people about it because I, I love Malcolm's books to start with. You know, Tipping Point is a kind of big influence on my life and, mm -hmm. and, and work. Um, and, and the uh, feedback I got initially was always like, oh, it's just like, um, it was almost like a Siri voice or like kind of an automated voice that's like, you know, just reading it, right? Like robotic ah. reading. And, and that was kind of people's pushback. I was like, no, no, this is like, it's actually Malcolm. And, and it's not just him reading his book. It's then it's all these other pieces kind of sewn into it. Yes. Well, you know, that, that I think is a perception that, you know, I have to overcome as a marketer, right? You know, the beauty is the, the content is there. The great experience is there. My job is to help tell people about it. So, um, you know, the more people know the reality, the, the more they fall in love with it. And it, to me, that tells me, A, there's more work to do, and B, there's fertile ground for growth because so many people have yet to experience uh, this, this type of listening. They listen to the radio. They listen to maybe a podcast, but this, this experience is different, so, uh, which is fun. There's a lot of growth ahead. So tell me about the trend. I noticed on Audible you now offer access to podcasts and you have exclusive podcasts. And, and why, the, why that trend? Why that embrace of the podcast world? And how do they kind of feed into each other, audiobooks and podcasts? Yeah, well, you saw the trend a little bit with Malcolm, right? And talking with strangers. I mean, he created something that's sort of a hybrid and taking the best of both worlds, 
to be very purpose built for his goal. And when we conducted research with our customers, they're like, yeah, I love listening. Uh, and I listen to Audible in this way. And when we ask, what else do you listen to? They're avid listeners, right? We have the most avid listener base in the world. Our members, when they, when they listen, they listen two hours a day uh, yeah. almost. So they are passionate, but they also listen to other things. And if I'm truly being customer obsessed, we're about super serving our customers. So how can we give them a better, more full experience? And we have been great with um, traditional audiobooks. We've been great producing some of our originals and doing exclusives. We know exactly how to do it. We know what works, what doesn't. We can guide people on the production process. And if you're into that, we've been super, super effective. But what about content for you when you don't traditionally listen to audiobooks, whether when you're doing chores or when you're commuting or uh, when you're exercising? What about when you're waking up or sleeping or with your family or um, just say you want to learn something new? Uh, and what our customers told us is, yeah, we love listening and I use Audible for this. I wish there was more content like this. And so we just introduced uh, an exciting offering, which goes, it's the biggest business model uh, evolution that Audible's had since its inception. So we've been a subscription business for 20 years, yet this is the first time we are actually uh, offering two different plans. One plan is our traditional, uh, you know, credit a month, gets you any title you want to keep forever model. But we've supplemented that, we've added to it, we made it more value, valuable to our customers and, and included over 68,000 hours worth of free or included listening, over 11,000 titles, and we're adding titles wow. weekly. And this is to get people into listening to things beyond the audiobook. So most of those things are some are audiobooks, but they're shorter form uh, exclusive than originals. They're theatrical performances that we have wow. exclusively. They're things like the Tom Morello performance uh, that he actually he actually performed at the Audible Theater in New York City, wow. where uh, he you know played played uh, guitar. He sang. He told stories, and we captured that together. We have sleep stories from you know, Diddy and from Nick Jonas. We have meditations from Gabby Bernstein. Uh, we have uh, music and poetry. So all different immersive forms of audio content we're now including so that in between those books that might take, you know, a little bit longer to complete, like the Chronicles of Narnia, uh, you can say, oh, I want to I want to learn something about, you know, um, Tom Morello uh, in one hour oh, wow, I didn't know the story of uh, Michael Jordan and the Bulls. Let me check out this podcast that we offer now. So um, there's many different avenues to serving customers, and we just want to provide the most complete offering. Uh, and the cool thing about it is many of our customers uh, listen a little bit like, oh, wow, I didn't really know that was the case with, say, the Bulls. And then they go into a deeper uh, selection that we can offer about sports or Michael Jordan. There's mm -hmm. titles about Michael Jordan. And I think we're in a unique position because we can help customers get a little bit of information if they want through short form content. And then if they really want the deep, rich insights with longer form audiobooks, we have that, that too. So uh, it's really exciting. And our customers, uh, the feedback so far has been really, really, uh, really positive. So, uh, a lot more to come too. We've got some cool things planned for the before the end of the year. It's amazing. Uh, in the states, you have a show, um, Shark Tank, in Canada, it's Dragons Den. Yes. And, and one of our dragons, Michelle, uh, wrote recently, and, and it kind of perked my attention as we were getting ready for this interview. Was uh, you know I've been using Audible, you know, as inspired by the Call app. I've now are, I'm using Audible to help me fall asleep at night. So I find a, a thing I want to learn, a, a business book. Uh, you know, she's a great business leader in our country, and, and it helps me fall asleep at night. You know, puts me to, to, to bed, and, and I was like, that's fascinating that people are now using Audible as kind of a sleep routine at the moment. That's awesome. That's so great to hear. You know, we, we, we purposely uh, explored this. We were getting that feedback, and some people were listening to traditional audiobooks, but then they would fall asleep, and then it lose their place, and it was like, 
They're like, they said, I wish I had something shorter or something more purpose built. And so you listen to your customer, they'll tell you what they want. And so we went out and sourced all this great content, purpose built to help you fall asleep, whether it's a meditation or sleep story or, um, or, uh, soundscapes. And, uh, you know, our soundscapes aren't synthetic. They're real recordings from the actual places. So, uh, that's great to hear. We've had, we launched that during COVID, uh, for, for free for our members because we knew people were having a, a hard time falling asleep. Yeah. And we accelerated that launch. It was supposed to be a little bit later, but we just kind of went all in and released it. And we've had most people download it, uh, you know, at the right time. So it's really, it's, uh, it's really cool to hear because that's what makes our, you know, our life, you know, like the hard work that everybody puts in on the team feel, uh, like it's valuable and, and, and impact in people's lives at a very individual level. So that's cool. Yeah. No, it's, it's funny to think even, uh, I have a five and a six-year-old, um, a five and six-year-old girls as well, and so with them sometimes uh, when we're doing lunch or a dinner, especially during a time of life where we're home a lot, um, I'll put on an audio book and, and I'll put on. A, we got a speaker up in our kitchen, and it's so nice because it'll just be a nice quiet. Sometimes you just need a nice quiet lunch, and and they love it. Yeah, respite, right? It's like okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. And do you yeah. talk about it? Like, do you, like do you listen and then talk about the content? Which is the best part because you have these nice short micro stories, as is the term I use, and, and, and then we can talk about it afterwards and we're, we can plan the next lunch or dinner time when we can listen to a story. And it's really fun, actually, because then it's, you know, there's different levels of stories that you can pick from. And, and then I have a 13-year-old son as well. So if we go on a big drive, we can, you know, read a book or learn something new and then discuss it afterwards. So That's cool. I mean, that's, that is a great life hack, especially when people are trying to get kids away from screens, right? I mean, that... To have the audio experience and just get away from screens, that's really cool. So why do you, uh, you know, as people are falling more in love with audio, why do you think some audiobooks do really well or some podcasts do really well and some don't? Like, What's that What's that missing factor that you find in, in kind of what you're, you know, the stance you have is kind of seeing it all and, and seeing the success factors? Yeah. Uh, part of it is uh, some performers come with built-in communities, right? Mm-hmm. Kevin Hart, Malcolm Gladwell, uh, they have audiences that they just yeah. bring and they know their audiences and they feed their audiences with the material that they love. Um, others are first time, um, you know, uh, authors and they're converting their, their written word into spoken word. And they might not think when they compose for the spoken word. Now, if they work with us, we can help them with that. But some of it is, you know, an early experience. Uh, but some hit it out of the park. And I think uh, it's about finding the uh, right uh, content for the right person. Mm-hmm. And the more we uh, kind of know about what customers love, the more we'll be able to, to program that for them and help them mm-hmm. find it. For, for example, customers uh, have really uh, started consuming a lot more self-help content, uh, self-development content via Audible. And we noticed this one, it was a, is it, if it's not a first time author, it was a, maybe a second time author. She self-published a book. So didn't have a big publisher, self-published on Audible. And we noticed that she was trending like, wow, this, this book called the five second rule was getting a lot of traction. And so we said, let's give it a little bit more merchandising, we gave it a little bit more merchandising. And then it, it took off, right? Wow, this has got some 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 legs. So we contacted her and we said, "Hey, do you want to do a couple of projects together?" So we signed up to do a few originals, launched uh, three consecutive uh, Audible originals with her. They're not available in, as a book, all bestsellers. Mm. And after the second one, she got a contract to have her own nationally syndicated uh, TV show. So uh, it, it, it's just about you know that's a. That's the dream story that you we'd love to help many people find their niche and find their audience through audio because she's got a talent. And she's really um, connects with her audience in such a great way. And we're, we're happy to be part of that story. And, and we want to be the best partner for creators so that uh, yeah. we can help them get their get their content to the right audience. And if we can help market it, help them produce it, help them help them get their message out, you know, that that's rewarding to us as well and to our customers. 
Awesome. One of my favorite authors is um, David Sedaris, and uh, I got introduced to a, an audiobook uh, from him. And you know, I was like, oh, you know, I was going on a trip, so my wife and I downloaded this, and and it changed everything. His voice, I'd, I'd never heard his voice before, and it was like, <laughs> so now when I recommend his books, I was like, gotta listen to an audiobook first. Just because his yeah. voice is so unique and it's so fascinating that it just it colors his books in such a beautiful way. If you do choose to go back to typical paper books, oh my gosh! And by the way, it's great. His his titles are great to listen uh, with your partner and just kind of dive in and uh, and enjoy that. He's got a such a great sense of humor, a kind of a dry you know sense of humor. But but he is 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 a, an example of an author. I think he has a quote. I forget. We have it on our website, but it's something like, I don't care if I never read a book again. Like he is all about listening. And the way he starts his orientation is about the listening experience. You know, mm -hmm. if you go back to the old, like initial audiobooks, it's really fun mm -hmm. to, uh, to even listen to them. Like I, I try to listen to some classics, but some are really hard because it's like someone so said, and he said, and she explained, it's like, yeah. you, that you don't you don't have that right it's yeah. like a performance and it's like it, it's like a watching a movie but made for audio yeah i want to talk about explaining leads to clients call rail gives you the call tracking you need to measure the success of your marketing efforts in real time discover how many calls you received from your google ads organic searches social media efforts and so much more and hey that's not the only reason we use call rail CallRail seamlessly integrates all of our call and conversion data with over 700 marketing tools and platforms, including Google Analytics and Salesforce, for a deeper insight into what's happening. Start telling the complete story to your clients. Try a free trial today with CallRail.com. I had uh, I had these records. It's funny. I had a, a miniature record player as a kid, and it kind of reminds me sometimes of it was like the Disney like books, vinyl, and you, you vinyl record player? yeah, yeah, and it was, it was small, and you pull these little tiny records out, and you could play it, and while you read along, and it was just so cool because they, they always had music involved, right? And that's what I love about mm -hmm. these new audiobooks is that the ones that bring in music and involve that kind of next level. Yeah, yeah, it's that it's that sort of Malcolm Gladwell that that. The intersection of different types of formats coming together in audio now. So those that are kind of in business or working with a brand or, or representing a brand at the moment, what do you think is the trend they should be following and watching when it comes to audiobooks and just maybe audio consumption in general? Yeah. Every uh, brand marketer has got audio, I think, in their at least list of things to consider right now. With the explosion of podcasts, with the explosion of original content and with influence influencers kind of like fading in and out depending on the moment and uh and different you know uh trends that go on in that area i i think that is clearly something that is on people's minds my my observation is that really connecting it to your own like uh brand promise is, is critical because that's where it's really authentic. You know, when you hear even a podcast, like we're not an ad supported platform. We advertise on podcasts. It's a right listener for us. When you hear a podcast and um, either it's pre-recorded or the the talent mails it in and just reads something, you, you can just tell it's not really authentic. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you find out the right connection to what the content is of that influencer and what you're about, that's where the magic happens. And so I, I think it's about when, when you work in audio, it, because listening is a very personal experience, you have to be intimate and you have to make that connection. Mm -hmm. And it can't just be broad brush, you know, uh, targeting. It's got to be very uh, specific to why is this relevant to me? Uh, and, and that's what the creators want. That's what the shows want as well. I, my son and I love this YouTuber named Mark Rober. I, I kind of got, you know, he started watching him and then he kind of wrote me in. And um, well, I think one of the best ads you guys have done is Mark at the end of the show is like, hey, by the way, this video is brought to you by Audible. Um, let me tell you about a recent book I read. And he just tells about this book he read. And then he's like, hey, go on, get your first book is free. And that actually got my son to sign up. He got his own Audible account. And, um, you know, but I just thought it was such a great way to connect like a YouTuber who speaks mostly to like, teenagers and, and maybe adults like myself who love these videos he puts out. Yeah. And it was awesome. It was a great bridge. 
oh, that's awesome to hear. That's great. You know, we, 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 we're very like, we, we, we listen and we inspect and it's like, it, it, yeah. So that's so cool. Yeah. He does a great job and, and connects with his audience in, in a relevant way and relates to it. While I was doing this, I was listening. Yeah. So yeah, it's cool. And his audience isn't like a Mr. Beast audience where it's like, let's just do something crazy and blow something up or, or do something ridiculous. His is like, hey, he, his stuff he does is fascinating, but he always wants to teach you something, right? Like, hey, I did this squirrel obstacle course, but what can we yeah. learn about squirrels? And what can we learn about kind of, um, you know, A, B, C testing? And it, you know, he always brings a scientific theory into what he does. That's very cool. That's yeah. awesome. So what trends are you seeing? Are you, are you seeing any cool trends that you think uh, like we should be familiar with in terms of audio? Like what, it, what what's on your mind? Well, I'm finding like the the people that were typically commuting aren't any longer. Like they're they're they, they've stopped commuting, and but so our listenership just in our own show when we study kind of our data as far as when people drop off they're listening to longer form shows so sometimes the show would go over kind of our typical time set but yet all those shows in the past are now getting listened to mm -hmm. and then any new show we put out that's longer is actually getting listened to to its full extent versus there being a drop off near the end that's so a great I find that's a great trend it's it's, it's the explosion of uh, audio content because you can't watch because there's always so much video you can you can watch and you got to feed all different aspects of your interests yeah yeah so i my wife got me onto an app called goodreads and oh, and so yeah. i i i use it because I, I i am a kindler as well i have been a kindler for a while but you know what i've uh, you know every once in a while i go on the kindle and, and you know, download a book and actually go that style and read it um but then uh goodreads is fascinating because they'll tell me books that you know friends are reading family members are reading or that it suggests so is that in, is there ever a connection between like Audible and Goodreads yet where you can go into Audible and it'll read your Goodreads? Yeah, um, believe it or not, uh, Goodreads and Audible are owned by the same company. Uh, we're both owned by Amazon and uh, we uh, have a little bit of integration with them right now. Like you okay. can link to purchase a book or download a book from Goodreads to Audible. We're working on getting the, maybe some clips, some less clips there. Um, yeah. but, uh, but there's a lot of good things that we can do together with Goodreads that are on our roadmap, but, uh, you know, every day is, uh, is a, a priority decision, but we know that's a great user base and you often see, uh, in some cases, a Goodreads review of a title because the, uh, the reviewers there are largely readers yeah. and the audio review in many cases, they're the same. Like if, if you were to. Um, look up Michelle Obama's Becoming. It's got killer reviews on Goodreads, killer reviews on Audible, killer reviews on Amazon. So killer reviews on the New York Times. So if you if you look at all sources of reviews, they're all fairly consistent. But in some cases, you get a really great audio performance that might not be as good on Goodreads uh, or vice versa. You get, you know, not so um, good of a performance, but the, the, the narrative arc and the, and the message and is just beautiful. And, you know, it doesn't so get so uh, great a review on audible, but it's spectacular in other formats. So, uh, for, for me, what the, one of the coolest things is how we can, um, look at, uh, how to help authors and creators optimize for the format. If I had an extra gazillion dollars, I would invest it in helping uh, the creators uh, really optimize and design with, you know, uh, like precision, how to make the best audio experience. This is when people typically fall off. Here's a narrative arc thing. Here's how many minutes you have to dedicate to this before getting to this. Um, and here's how you incorporate sound in a way that keeps people engaged. So uh, it, there's an art and science to it, which makes it really fun. But I think that's the next frontier for uh, audio creation. That and mixed formats. Uh, to to our to your point about Malcolm Gladwell. It's fascinating to think. It's like yeah, as much as you're you know marketing all these you know audiobooks and, and, and you know, if the product isn't good, you know you can lead all these people to it. But if they don't retain you know don't retain their membership and their subscription base, and you know what can you do besides make the products better? That's right. That's right. Yeah. But yeah, it's um, you know it's fascinating the amount of people that are going there. I think the one sampler is nice, right? Like try one book for free, try one book for free. 
Um, what I'd love to see, so here's my thing, in Goodreads, I've got my Goodreads and I've invested in Goodreads, which I feel like I've done so far, is if Goodreads would suggest podcasts to me. So that's the bridge that would be interesting. Interesting. That's, yeah. I'm going to write that one down. That's, that's actually really interesting. But now that, you know, now that Audible has kind of embraced podcasting world, there isn't really a kind of a podcast curator tool out there that I think, you know, I'm sure there's like Apple has some suggested ones for you, but it, I don't feel like it's at the level where it's like, well, I don't just listen to podcasts. I also read books. So if you take my book reading habits and my podcast listening habits, then make suggestions for me. Yeah. I mean, uh, that is the intent, right? That's exactly, that's that. I think we're in a unique spot to help, uh, like short form podcast yeah. to long form content and, and serve you the right recommendation when you want it most. Uh, yeah. I think that's a great idea. And, but having others do the same, like Goodreads, uh, that's, that's really interesting. The, the whole mm-hmm. podcast, um, uh, effort on Audible is, you know, really to complement all the other content that we have. So right now, uh, we do uh, use uh, some of the uh, merchandising that we have available to recommend podcasts to you. So if you go there today, um, mm-hmm. uh, you will see uh, that in the U.S. And, uh, okay. and then we're working to to kind of roll out that functionality elsewhere. But in the U.S., you'll see recommended podcasts for you based on that. Uh, but we haven't uh, linked that to other sources of recommending uh yeah, uh, audio books or audio titles. So that's a great suggestion. Yeah, no, it's fascinating. Even um, dealing with our show being a podcast now for the last five years, um, eventually we got picked up by Amazon Prime Video in the U.S. and the U.K. only. So only in those two countries did they have an interest in business to business content at the time. So it was it was interesting to see they're testing out even video, trying different video content pieces to see if consumers want business to business content via video. Yeah, I mean, I think every consumer is different, and if you serve them some with video, some with audio, or you know, some go uh, in between formats too. Uh, so, do, do most of your listeners listen, or do most of your does most of your audience listen, or do they watch video? Or do you have any data they're, on that at this point? They're they're listeners, yeah. So listeners, our our you know our viewership on our actual TV show isn't uh, isn't huge, right? It's not like we're you know it's not like we're beating out Thirty Rock or any of these other actual <laughs> like you know because at the end of the day you want to watch a show with your family, you want to have a good time. It's not really you aren't there to learn and have a really kind of like unless you're watching master class or some sort of like you know, yeah. how to YouTube video, you're there to watch, you know, when you're on Amazon prime, you're there to watch something that's enjoyable. I find more cooking leisure. shows count as how to, I don't know. Like, <laughs> Oh dude, I, I got, um, I got hooked. My, my kind of, everyone's kind of got their, you know, working from home or, or being at home. Um, the great British baking show has been my kind of like, go to. yeah, I went through all eight seasons. Cause it was just like this nice leisure. It was almost like comfort TV. It was comfort TV for me. Yeah, my, my daughter loves that, and we watch it together. And um, we've tried some things that have been um, yep. have been you know demonstrated in the show, not to the <laughs> same quality nearly as the show, <laughs> and yeah. certainly not without um, a, a big mess. Uh, but yeah. hey, it's <laughs> that is a great premise. I, I, I love yeah. that. Franchise. So as a CMO, and, and with especially the, the audio world just shifting so much and, and just hyperdrive shift in the last while as well, where do you go to stay on trend and what are your kind of resources you go to or books or, you know, email subscriptions or what, where do you go for inspiration and ideas? Yeah, uh, it's, it's real fun. Um, I, I listen like to so many things constantly. I listen to a, a bunch of uh, business part podcasts, marketing podcasts. Um, I uh, listen to the Wall Street Journal and New York Times yeah. every yeah. day uh, on Audible. I uh, have a bunch of feeds uh, that I subscribe to, um, and those are always keeping you, you know, up to date. Uh, and so that's sort of baseline. Um, the only thing I read anymore is The Economist magazine because it gets delivered on a Friday yeah. and you have the whole weekend yeah. to read it. But that's the only thing I really read anymore, like with my eyes. Uh, but um, but I find the best information I get, the best sort of exchange of ideas mm-hmm. is talking with colleagues and mm-hmm. talking with colleagues in other industries and other mm-hmm. um, other uh, other disciplines. So yeah. uh, there's a bunch of former colleagues uh, that I used to work with. And 
since COVID started, everybody's virtual and we can't get together. We we actually have these virtual happy hours. So now I have like three different circles of kind of former colleagues going with virtual happy hours. And, you know, it's kind of fun because, you know, you learn about the industries they're in, you learn about the trends, you talk about what other people are doing. Oh, did you see that company do that? Yeah, I didn't like that because of this. Or, oh, this is a spectacular idea. Think about how we can extend that to that. So to me, if, if, if you know, you surround yourself with thought leaders, even if they're yeah. different and diverse in other disciplines and just bring an alternative perspective, that's what... That's the beauty of of kind of learning from each other, and uh, that's where I, I that's where frankly I, I you know get the most energy and you know get uh, keep keep current the, the the most I think significantly that's the most significant tool I think I have to keep current and never would have had it if, like on a religious basis but for COVID never would have even yeah. you know and we're all committed to it like. Sometimes awesome. six of us may attend, sometimes eight, sometimes nine, but it's always a great exchange. That's really cool. And, and your go-to apps that you can't live without day to day? Well, obviously uh, Audible. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, but from to keep you know in touch with my kids, you know, uh, yep. Snapchat is you know, yep. uh, you know it's the one where I can actually reach them for me. Yep, that's uh, yep. that's. Uh, that's a go-to and and then all the traditional ones i have a, i have a music app i have a yeah. video uh app and yeah. um i also now um am able to get uh podcasts in audible but prior to that like i would i would use so many different podcasting apps to experiment like for functionality because yeah. i because i knew yeah. we would like get more engaged here so which ones do i like which ones present the content best which ones really give me the uh, right sequence of, of events, less mm-hmm. clicks right into the content. So uh, always, uh, always experimenting there. But uh, but yeah, I would say uh, like Snapchat for me, for yeah. for kid communication is my, uh, my everyday app of choice uh, for day-to-day contact. That's awesome. Uh, in podcasts that you recommend to marketers and people kind of learning about marketing at the moment. Yeah. Um, well, Business Wars, I think, is great for any business yeah. person. Um, that, I think, is, uh, you know, fact-based, great narratives, uh, good histories there that, that apply for everybody into perpetuity. Yeah. So uh, that's yeah. some, some a really great, uh, really great podcast. I love um, uh, non-marketing uh, podcasts yeah. also. So yeah. uh, for me, you know, I'll, I'll listen to... A bunch, but I I feel that's work a little bit. So and I yeah, love it. Yeah, but yeah. I, for me to yeah. decompress, like I'll, yes. I'll, I'll do I'll do some true crime. I'll do some like yeah, uh, like political history. There's one yeah. uh, from uh, Wondery about elections and historic elections hmm. and how yeah. different people use different tactics, which is really timely now um, at, in the U.S. And it's just kind of goes through uh, every like presidential U S election in the history of time. And that's, so that's pretty wow. interesting. And there's one called guru about the whole, okay. like self-help is such a popular category yeah. and there's so many great people helping people and an audible yeah. is a vehicle for that. So, but there's also like some not so, um, uh, 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 up and up players in that area. Yep. And this podcast called guru just kind of breaks it down and uh, talk awesome. about the, the the dark side to that. So that's sort of like yeah. candy and entertainment. Uh, that, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I have a favorite put on by our, our Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, kind of yes. your NPR, yes. uh, called The Great Debaters. It's oh, my favorite. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So okay. Who's your, who's your, who, who, do you have a favorite? A podcast in general? F- favorite like, Great Debater. Oh, I do. Okay. Kyle Bottom. I actually went to uh, high school with him, and uh, and we, we were in the same youth group. And then he, uh, every once in a while, shows up on the Great Debaters, and it's kind of fun because I'm like, he's also he's really good, but he's also I, I fun that I know the guy. And uh, but there's also another guy who my son and I really love, who's from Quebec. I don't remember his name, but he also has this he has an incredible accent, a very dry sense of humor, and he's very like self-effacing, and it's brilliant on the show. Every time he shows up, he brings an A game, and it's awesome. 
That is excellent. And so you listen together with your son to the Yeah, yeah, it's it's like our road trip. Yeah, like driving to somewhere. It's cuz it's again, it's only, you know, it, there's a bunch of micro debates within it. So there's usually it's a half hour in total and, and you can break it down in these like, you know, 10 minute increment increments and it's it's awesome. That's awesome. I'll have to yeah. check that. I'll have to check that out. I've heard of it, but I have not checked it out. So, yeah. That's yeah. cool. Um any kind of last minute kind of um ideas uh you know, inspiration for those that are in marketing that are considering kind of the, the go-to. What, maybe what's the first book they should listen to on the Audible platform? What's kind of like you're like, hey, if you want to check out audiobooks, see what the future of audiobooks looks like, this is a good kind of sampling. Maybe a few that you'd say, hey, you know what, try a bit of each of these. Yeah, yeah. That's a great question. Um, I, I think because it's so different and if you're coming from podcasts, it's such a nice in. It is Malcolm Gladwell's Talking With Strangers. Um, I think uh, I think that is spectacular. Um, I think yeah. that that's one where um, you, you'll really ease into it from podcasts, and you'll understand this multi-format uh, experience. Yeah. I also believe that if you're into long-form narrative, uh, Trevor Noah's "Born a Crime" oh. is just like among my favorites. Favorite, and again, like you said, he actually performs it and it's his words really personal really intimate and you know meaningful but also super funny um yeah and i think uh kevin hart's uh i can't make this up which is his first uh you know audio book um spectacular if you don't realize how funny audio books can be until you listen to that and him perform it he has a book version of it but the audiobook's got like 15% more material because he just ad libs and has all these synaptic leaps in studio that makes it so much fun. So uh, to me, I think those three are different and really, really uh, uh, meaningful as well. I'm also a super, super um, uh, fan of um, uh, Lisa Wingate and she writes historical fiction. Um, and there's this one a uh, really great story uh, called Before We Were Yours and uh, a, a, one of my favorites of all time. So I think those are probably, if I had to recommend four, those would be my top four. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show, sharing. Thank you, Darian. Uh, mm-hmm. Have an awesome week and I will talk with you soon. All right. Thanks everyone for joining yeah. us this week on Marketing Jam. Um, really great to have you this week. And so make sure you check out audible.com for all the uh, great audio experiences. Uh, I guess what we call it now, it's not just um, someone reading it. It's not a robot reading it. It's full experiences that you can check out. Uh, and uh, beyond the book is, is what you're going to get. So thanks for joining us this week. And we'll see you next week on The Jam. Thanks. Nice.